some more watercoloring today. I just realized I don't think I updated my info. Let's see. Yep, we're going to be doing some watercoloring exercises. Watercoloring technique exercises. How about that? Yeah, yeah, I can chat. I can type. Okay. Getting everything ready over here. And um, I have another camera view that I'm not sure is going to be super helpful, but I thought it um, at the end of the day I can probably zoom in on my drawing like this and then um, you can still see in the overhead like what am I doing with my brush and am I like washing it out or tapping it or whatever. Um, so we'll try that out. That camera isn't super great, so it's probably not going to give us super awesome quality, but I'm hoping for overview reasons it might be decent enough. Maybe like this. Or maybe more like this. Or something like that. Um, okay. Turning on my stream manager so I can see the chat room. And there we go. Super cool. Alright, so um, yesterday, if you tuned in, I played with this new sketchbook and new uh, watercolor palette I got. And I thought today I'm just going to keep doing some exercises. I, I just had to pick up my three-year-old from preschool because she has a fever. So she's upstairs sleeping right now so I could have to end this at any moment um, so I don't want to have to start like a well, not have to but I don't want to start like a full painting and then not being able to finish it also I have to admit I am not to the stage yet that I feel comfortable coming up with a painting by myself from scratch like a full actual project I can make up some little scenes and stuff but nothing you know so I thought we'll just do some exercises and we'll stop when we need to stop. Um, what I started doing is I started collecting little notes on um, kind of exercises I can do in my in my um, little sketchbook and um, I just put them in this little envelope in the front and so this way I whenever I don't know what to do I can just you know pick one or draw one and that's what I think I'm going to do today. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to do this. Um, it's kind of a cute little like, you just paint random rectangles and it's called a color field. And I've seen um, multiple artists do this, um, namely Lou Davis. You can find her on YouTube and on Instagram. She's Lou Rachel Davis. And Rebel Unicorn Crafts did something similar the other day too. She's on you uh, on Instagram, so I'm thinking that sounds like a great little exercise. So this new sketchbook I got, it's a watercolor sketchbook, but it's actually the way the paper is mounted, it's not always right side up. So for watercolor paper to recognize if the if you've got the right side, you want the side that's more textured like this. Whereas you see this side, it's pretty smooth. So that's the back side and the textured side is the front side. That texture helps with water flow and water control. But the way this paper is mounted is essentially just watercolor pages together. So not always do I have the correct side up. It's kind of annoying. So here this painting I did yesterday on the stream, I actually painted on the back side of the paper. So this would have been the page I wanted to paint it on versus I pin, I don't know if you can even tell. But I mean, it still worked, it's fine, it's a sketchbook, but just to point that out. So this now has both sides of the sketchbook um, with the right side up. And then there will be another page later on where it's both pages that are the wrong side, whatever. So I'm gonna just use one side and I'm thinking I'm going to use a somewhat small brush, but not tiny brush. So this is a number four. 
uh, round brush. I really like that. That's like one of my go-to sizes for eight and 12 or sort of where I'm going a lot. And my brushes aren't actually super great. Um, there's probably better brushes out there, but frankly, for what I'm doing, it's good enough. I got um, two cups of water over here in my palette and I just sprayed um, my paints with some water and I'm going to actually do that again. I'm get nice and soaked. Activate that pigment. And then I'm going to um, more or less randomly place rectangles on the page and just play with the color in the water and how it's mixing. I do want to keep sort of in a color palette because if you get too crazy with the number of colors it gets all muddled and dark so i'm probably gonna stick with um somewhat analogous analogous colors for the minute and then um i might add in some complementaries after the fact or later on what am i feeling like if someone was here in the chat, they could help me decide. I'm thinking, I'm, I always like blues, but it's fall. And so I'm sort of like leaning more into reds now and oranges and yellows. I don't know. Um, this is really cool. It's like a um, keychain. Um, I got it from the Grey Muse, which I think is the original creator. That's what, she, what they claim anyway. So this is off of Etsy. Um, and it's kind of a fun color wheel that um, helps me decide on colors sometimes. So what if we went with sort of a purple, red, orange color palette to start it with. And then maybe we'll drop in even some yellows. And then at the end we'll go in with some, some blues. And then I'll have the whole color wheel anyway. But... That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we'll start with something easy like a peach, light peach. Um, how about just some red, orangey red. And then we'll put some a little bit of cadmium yellow, which makes it more orange. And then I'm going to drop in just a tap of blue, which will mute it down a little bit. That's um, blue is sort of the complementary of red. And so it like will complementary colors always cancel each other out. So if you mix them equal parts, they'll get brown. And I just want to tap just to mute that color a little bit. That may have been too much. See, now it's nice and brown not what I meant to do, but that's okay. We can always fix that. So we'll go and do some more red. There we go. There, there. Nice little rusty red and then just to tap more of the yellow to get a little bit more orange. There you go. That was obviously more yellow than I wanted. This is something I definitely struggle with sometimes. It's like I end up with like large puddles of color because I have to like go back and forth so much. And um, you can do that to, to an extent, but eventually it'll <coughs> not work anymore. So lastly, I'm just going to take some of that pigment and I'm just going to take like a very small amount and like mostly water. And then... My brush is very loaded. I'm just going to go in and draw some rectangles. So the way Lou Davis did it in her YouTube tutorial, I really liked. She basically gets like the rough shape down. And then once she has the shape as she wants it roughly, she then kind of cleans up the edges with her brush. And I'm going dry. I'm sorry, wet on dry. So my brush is wet very wet, very loaded, but my um, paper is dry. And then just add a little bit more water. And then you can drop in 
maybe an, a little bit more pigment if you want it. But this is the fun of it, like just, you know, making it up as you go. Okay, and now we just keep painting rectangles and squares how we feel. Um, so I said I'm going to stick with sort of reds and oranges. So I want some purple. I'm going to go with a lighter purple, not with the one that's on the palette. So I'm going to use that same red. a little blue is that how you get purple I think it's the other way around I think you go blue and a little bit of red <laughs> that's okay we'll just do purple later go with the same color again, huh? There, make it more yellow. There, I like it. And then we'll just drop in more water. There's no right or wrong here, this is just, just fun. Way too much water. Okay, so from here, what happens if we just drop in a little bit of purple in the corner? Just a little bit of pigment because I wanted to. I keep turning on music and it keeps turning off. It's really annoying, actually. I'm going to see where that went. See if it sticks around. All right. Now I'm gonna get serious about more like a purpley color. Don't like this part of the palette. It's sort of a rougher plastic, and it's not. It's not. Um, blue um, it's not smooth so the pigments sort of separate on there pretty gnarly there you go like a nice burgundy cold purple okay. kind of want to put that right there right next to it sort of mute it touching a little bit. And let's see what happens if we just add a little more red to that.
I want to go with a little bit more yellow. Something a little bit more bright. Oh, hello. Well, hello. Looks like I just got a little raid. 31 people. Wow, that's a lot of people. Tikoyaki Taiko, thank you. Appreciate it. Just doing some easy, relaxing watercolor exercises, playing with my palette and my colors. I'm doing good. Hi. Thank you for stopping in. Wow, look at you. Yeah, that's the goal. Just relaxing. Just hanging out over here. Got a, a brand new palette. As you can see, it's all nice and clean. So I'm trying to play around and see what I can come up with and just see what the colors can do and that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, it's so fun to just play. Don't even worry about it and just play. How are you all doing? The mat, my under, yeah, it's a huge cutting mat. It's really fun. Um, I normally make jewelry, which that mat is much more helpful for. Um, but yeah, it's a good mat. Let's drop in some of this yellow just in the corner and see what happens. Watercolors are so fun, Tico. You should just try it. Seriously, it's 
like especially if you do something like this where it's like low pressure doesn't matter just do it try it play um, if you go on YouTube you'll find there's a lot of tutorials and I'm not like good at it I'm just playing around it's my my thing I do when I'm not making jewelry <laughs> and it's so relaxing especially if you take the pressure out and not try to like make it something specific and just play I, I now want to look that up by saying I'm such a big fan of the vintage Pokemon color art I wanna um, I'm gonna go check that out later I love it when in watercolor the colors just start like playing with each other and fading and and connecting and mixing in unexpected ways it's just fun So, Taiko, what do you normally do? What do you normally stream? I'm not familiar with your stream. I'll definitely check it out afterwards. Nice chill streams and doing art sounds great. That's probably about what I do over here. <laughs> what I love to do with watercolor too is that you can basically just paint water. I'm just dropping some water on the page instead of any pigment. And then you can just drop in colors. the mix Jack QC says oh hey watercolor exercises I used to do this in my first year of art school it's so relaxing and maybe the best way to learn about color for me. Exactly. It is just mostly relaxing for me right now, but also this palette is brand new and I haven't tried all of the colors, you know, extensively. And so just sort of 
not putting any pressure on but just doing some random exercises and letting the color do what the color wants to do helps me learn how these particular colors how this particular palette works and it's also just relaxing and fun <laughs> mm. You don't really have to know much about mixing colors. You can just try it out, if, especially if you don't have any pressure on it. I got this cool little water uh, color wheel because it helps me sort of um, know which colors um, do what. It's from the Gray Muse. You can find it on Etsy. Um, and then you can sort of um, find, you know, color palettes that work, sort of like triadic colors or complementary colors. And, and then just stick with those and then play with it and just see what see what happens and that's just beautiful um, what do you paint when not exercise so I don't actually I'm not actually a painter <laughs> I, uh, I make jewelry and um, I'm just I've, my my hobby when I don't make jewelry is basically any other craft and right now I'm just extensively obsessing over um, watercolor yeah it's really nice it's it's like a keychain I think they have like needle minders or pins too and you can just you know it's perfect so it helps me a lot like I play around with it so when I started the stream I decided to go sort of with um, like reds oranges and purples um, my camera's still working just made noises oops and and that's sort of where where I you know have my color orientation um, I've been recently like just playing with all sorts of stuff and I love there's this um, company you can buy kits from in the US they're um, called let's make art and so I've been working a lot with their kits and so this has been my favorite recently that I made yesterday Little mushrooms but it's not like my design I just follow instructions but it's been fun to do that. And there's, I've got two boxes from them and there's like four paintings in each box. This one's also a favorite. Such a simple painting, but such a cool effect. You know, so I'm just playing around. Um, what kind of jewelry do I make? I make sterling silver, excuse me, art jewelry. So one of a kind um, sort of um, statement pieces mostly. I don't have a lot floating around here, but I'm just looking. So I have just grabbing random stuff. So I've made some rings recently that I haven't um, oxidized yet, but this is like a wire woven ring. So I love doing wire weaving and wire work. But also, um, you know, just, this is some statement rings that I recently made. Um, so yeah, thank you, appreciate that. But you know, I'm kind of in a bit of a creative funk right now. I don't know what it is, but I'm going on a big trip next week and my toddler, my three-year-old just came home from, I had to pick her up from school because she's got a fever. And so sitting down and doing something before she wakes up and is all sick and needs mommy seemed like the right thing to do. What color should we do next? Kind of feeling that lighter orange here. It's that yellowy orange. Exactly, the calm before the toddler, I like that. So yeah, poor thing, she's got a fever. And of course she has a fever now that we're close close to our trip, but you know, it'll be fine. Drop in a little bit of that orange. Maybe take out a little bit of the value here. Oh, thank you. I'm sure she'll be fine. It's so... Toddlers are weird. 
they get sick all the time and at the end of the day they're usually fine see i'm totally failing with my i want to get like a nice um light purple and i'm totally failing i don't know i don't know why <laughs> I, I always just get either a dark blue or or a brown <laughs> So, so, so much for, I don't know what I'm, how to, um, mix color either. So, you know, <laughs> let's try, try it one more time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's always in the, like, how much of what you do, right? I don't, I'm still not happy though. I want it to be brighter, lighter, but I'm struggling. And then it just gets too red. Well, this isn't too bad. My goal for this exercise is really just kind of getting to know the color palette a little bit better and seeing how the pigments behave and just relaxing. That's the goal. I also um, did like a little um, just squiggly liner exercise earlier, which is fun because you don't have to think about it. Just pick like two or three colors that sort of go with each other and then just do it. And it doesn't always have to be perfect, you know? Or even just swatching, just swatch your colors, you know, make them a little lighter as you go and play with the values and the hues and don't even worry about it. It's great to like get more familiar with color and your palette and the water and how much water you have on the brush and all that stuff that um, it makes a big difference. Most of my color mixing practice practice came from my desk of cake, sorry, my days of cake decorating. Oh yeah, and that, that behaves so much differently than watercolor. It's so funny um, how it's like additive and subtractive and how that behaves differently depending on um, the type of color. So um, co icing colors will mix more like acrylic colors. Um, and you can keep adding whereas watercolors if you keep adding it'll just end up brown eventually so it's kind of interesting to see the differences and you know what and now we're gonna drop in some pre-mixed purple just along the bottom Do you also use gouache? I have never used gouache. Um, some people love it. It's gouache is essentially watercolor, but more pigmented. So it's more opaque and some people love it and I've never tried. So no, let's use something more red, more darker, vibrantier red, vibrantier. That's a good word, isn't it? I like to thin it out a little bit just with water. And I'm gonna put that right there. And I like sometimes corner touching. I sort of do that on purpose so that I get a little bit of color mix. Yeah, the icing taught me how to use tiny bits of dark, dark pigment. It would go so far. Exactly. Right? Like right there. I love it when it does that. And it bleeds over. And you can't control it. You just have to go. Let it go and do it. And that's... I'm like a total type A in my normal life. So watercolor is like me letting go. <laughs> That makes sense. Oops. 
I don't actually know if I can paint with the camera so close, but we can try. Ooh, that's dark. So I uh, just used a swig right out of the palette. And that was probably more than, than I wanted in terms of pigmentation, but yeah. Something I always struggle with is water control, like how much water I have on my brush and how much water I put down on my paper. And so this is a nice exercise to kind of go with that a little bit too and play with that. Something that's awesome with watercolors too is that you can pull pigment off the paper again later on. So like I want this to be lighter I take a damn clean brush and I just pull that pigment see how how it gets lighter isn't that cool highlight I did like a fun exercise I learned how to do like a I'm saying this wrong bouquet bo bokeh bo bouquet effect <laughs> you know like a camera blur and so I did this yesterday and that's kind of a fun exercise and it does that so you lift the pigment back out this purple I love this purple Tycho says it's the same actually so whichever one you mean it's the same um, it's the just straight out of the palette the Windsor um, it's a dioxine dioxazine di oh my god <laughs> look it up <laughs> di dioxazine I think is what it's called dioxazine purple Going back to my orangey. Oh, my daughter is up. So I'm gonna have to say goodbye. There she is. <laughs> it was fun um, chatting with you all. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Bye.